Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. So in today's session, we'll discuss about one more concept in operating system that is deadlocks. Deadlocks. So in our previous session, we have seen the process synchronization, right? So for the concurrent process, in order to uh, use the shared memory, in order to maintain the data consistency, so we are moving towards the process synchronization and then we have seen the semaphores, right? So next we will see the deadlocks. So before going to the deadlocks, let us discuss a few points that if any process wants to be get executed, it may require some resources, right? So the process will utilize those resources to execute itself. So, who will allocate the resources? The operating system will allocate the resources to the processes based upon their availability. So, if the resource is not available, then the process have to wait until it gets the resource. So, without the resource, the process will not be get executed. Right? So, once the work done by the process, automatically the resources which are being allocated to that process will be released. So this is the steps we need to remember while executing any process, right? So first one, so process may require resources to complete its execution, to complete its execution. That's the first one. Right? Next, operating system will allocate resources to the processes, to the processes. If resources are not available, resources are not available. then the process how to wait the process how to wait until it gets the required resources so required resources so so without the resources the process will not be get executed if it requires any resource so it have to wait until it gets the resources and all those resources will be allocated by the operating system itself. And the next one, once the process, once the process completes its execution, completes its execution, resources, resources allocated to that process should be released should be released that means whatever the resources which are allocated for that particular process should be released deallocated so that those resources may be used by another process so the operating system immediately it, the operating system will find out the resources which are available and the operating system will allocate those resources to the corresponding process which are requiring these resources right so this is the steps going on right now what is a deadlock what is a deadlock so a deadlock is a situation so it is a situation where one or more processes are being executed and waiting for the resources which are being allocated for another process, right? See, I'll explain. So this is a situation, a deadlock. It is a situation where one or more processes, one or more processes are waiting for the resources 
फ्यूचर एलोकेटेड टू समर प्रोसेस समर प्रोसेस राइट सो एग्जाम्पल लेट अस टेक सो लेट अस एक्सप्लेन यू विद एन एग्जाम्पल सो दट यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड वॉट एक्सैक्टली द डेडलॉक सो लेट अस कंसिडर टू प्रोसेसेस टू प्रोसेसेस पी वन पी टू देर आर टू प्रोसेस and there are two resources there are two resources we call it as r1 r2 okay two process and two resources so if p1 requires i mean pre r1 is allocated to p1 so i'll write here r1 is allocated to p1 right so r1 which is being allocated to p1 similarly r2 is allocated to p2 so let us take here r2 which is being allocated to p2 right so two process and two resources so if r1 is allocated to p1 that means a resource 1 is allocated to process 1 to complete its execution similarly r2 resource 2 is allocated to process 2 to complete its execution so in order to complete the execution of p1 if it requires r2 right see i'll write here if p1 requires r2 for its completion which is allocated to p2 that means p1 is requesting for r2 to complete its execution that means p1 requires already r1 is allocated to p1 but in order to complete its execution p1 requesting the resource r2 but here what happens r2 is allocated to p2 so p1 will be in a waiting state okay so which is allocated to p2 and similarly the second point if p2 requires r1 for its execution for its execution which is allocated to p1 so p2 requires r1 in order to complete its execution p2 requires r1 to complete its execution which is allocated to p1 so p2 will be also in the waiting state so because in order to complete the execution of p1 it requires r2 r2 is already allocated for p2 so p1 has to wait until p2 releases the r2 so p2 will release the resource 2 whenever it completes its execution but here if the situation is like this that means if p2 requires R1 to complete its execution, which is allocated to P1. So P2 will be in the waiting state until it receives the R1, which has to be released by P1. So here you can observe the situation. P1 will release R1 only after its execution. P2 will release R2 only after its completion of execution. But P2 requires R1. P1 requires R2. so unless p1 unless the p1 gets the r2 p1 will not complete its execution until p2 gets the r1 p2 doesn't uh, complete its execution so this chain process so here in this situation p1 and p2 will be in the blocked state so both will be in the waiting state so this is a never ending process 
So such a situation we call it as a deadlock. Such a situation we call it as a deadlock situation. Right? So it's a situation where one or more processor waiting for the resources. So here P2 is waiting for R1, P1 is waiting for R2, which are allocated to some other process. So R1 is allocated to P1, R2 is allocated to P2. So this type of situation we call it as a deadlock situation. Deadlock situation. So for, uh, uh, just for uh, understanding, I will give you an example. So traffic, traffic, right? See, let us take this is a so there is a center, okay, where this is a center, right? So if car from this side wants to move here. Okay, and car moves here, and car gets here, and car gets here. So you can imagine this situation. So this car, this car wants to move this side. So when it will move, whenever this car is moved towards the front, it will move. So this is stuck. This this car is stuck. This car is stuck. So such a type of situation is called as a deadlock situation such type of situation we call it as a deadlock situation so here what happens all the cars will be in the waiting state this is a never ending process okay so such a situation we call it as a deadlocks such situation we call it as a deadlocks and now we'll see what are the necessary conditions that to be satisfied if the situation is a deadlock that gives a deadlock situation, that makes a deadlock situation, right? So conditions for a deadlock. What are the conditions for deadlock? So there are maybe four conditions for a deadlock situation. So conditions for deadlocks. So first one is a mutual exclusion, exclusion, mutual exclusion. So this already we have discussed in our previous sessions, mutual exclusion means, so if one or more process wants to share the resources, at a time only one process should share it, right? So if one process is allocated, I mean one resource is allocated to one process, so other process have to wait until completes its execution, that we call it as a mutual exclusion so only one process can be executed or utilize the resources so only one per one process should utilize the resources so another process have to wait right so this is one reason why we are getting the deadlock because if one process, so for example, R1 is allocated to P1, in, in our previous example, R1 is allocated to P1 and P2 have to wait until the P1 releases the R1. So that we call it as a mutual exclusion. The next one, hold and wait. This hold and wait means one process can hold multiple resources and again it can wait for any other resources, right? So one process can be availing multiple resources. So a process can hold multiple resources, multiple resources and Still, it can wait for another resource, another resource. So, if, if the process want to release the resource, it should get another resource and then only it can complete the process and it can release the resources. So, this is the second condition why we are getting these deadlock situations. 
And the third one, no preemption. No preemption. So here, no preemption means so no interruption. So the process have to release the resources only after the completion. So the user or the operating system can't release the process by force. I, I mean, can't release the resources from the process by force, right? So the resources allocated to the process can't be released by force. Process itself have to release. the resources. Only the process can deallocate the resources. Okay? And the fourth condition circular weight. Circular weight. So here the processes will be in a waiting state in a circular fashion to, to allocate, I mean to utilize the resources. So processes will be waiting in a circular manner circular manner to utilize the resources for example let us take this one process p1 and resource r1 and resource r2 and process p2 so already r1 is allocated to p and r2 is allocated to p2 and see so you can observe p1 is requesting for R2 and P2 is requesting for R1. So you can see the last process is allocated, I mean the last process is requesting the resource which is allocated for the first process. So this is called a cyclic manner. Okay, cyclic manner. So you can observe this is the last process, right? So this is the last process. So last process is requesting the resource which is allocated to the first process. So that doesn't happen, that never happens, right? So because process 1 is already waiting for R2, which is allocated for P2. So the, these are the four conditions, the mutual exclusion, exclusion hold and wait, non preemption and circular weight. So these are the four conditions, so that may give the deadlock situation, right? So hope you understood this uh, introductory part. So let's stop here and if you are having any doubts regarding this uh, deadlocks, feel free to post your doubts in the comment section. Definitely I will try to clarify all your doubts. If you really enjoyed my session, like my session, share my session with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. Thank you very much.